The presence of ruins and the mythologies that grow out of them have fascinated artists for centuries. There is a strong picturesque tradition employing the room as a central visual element. More important, however, is the ruin's potency as metaphor, metaphor of the transitory nature of the material world and of us as viewers and as participants, as individuals affected by that process. Cindy Tower is one of the most talented and perceptive artists working in St. Louis today. Her work grows out of the metaphorical tradition and reminds me, either literally or referentially, of the work of Caspar David Friedrich and Anselm Kiefer, both of whom were profoundly affected by loss, decay, and transience. Now, Cindy Tower discusses her work with you for the St. Louis Beacon. I went to UCSD and studied with Alan Caprow, and we were taught to always consider the process in making artwork. So we were very aware that the act of making was part of the artwork. You know, in California, I remember dressing as a, like a butcher when I chainsawed, and I made a lot of sculptures that only would be realized if people would perform them. Installations became more and more expensive to build, and I decided I would simply uh, paint installations other people made. I have to paint from life because I like to see around corners, and perception is slow for me. I, I need time to observe and see. And as I'm painting, I see more, so I put more in the painting. And I, um, in this one, I found some hypodermic needles. There's, there's one here, and there's one here, and there's um, you no know, beer bottles. Where are they? Where, oh, like here. There's all sorts of things in my um, paintings, you know, and I, even I forget where they are, you know. I, but so there's kind of like urban archaeology. As I'm painting, I'm very aware that I'm doing very silly things. Like it's there's something kind of humorous about this sort of suburban middle-aged woman going into East St. Louis with crackheads and wild dogs and all the, you know, and uh, bricks falling. I'm taught from my training at UCSD with Eleanor Anton and Alan Capra to sort of make fun of yourself as you're making. While I'm painting, I'm, I'm a participant in my own Fellini film because I'm dealing with urban explorers, uh, homeless people, all the characters that inhabit these, these sites, mountain bike riders, uh, bird watchers, hunters, all sorts of, uh, even archeologists show up. Well, the economic meltdown has completely changed how I've painted uh, this year, at least. I started using found paint from dumpsters, industrial grade, and then as long as you put um, fat over thin, so you put the latex down first and then you worked up with the Rust-Oleum paint. But with industrial grade paint, you, it just drips and you can't really draw with it because if you draw perfectly, the rendering melts before your very eyes. So this painting is called Collapse. It was done you know, since the economic meltdown and it was um, kind of scary to go into this building because it was collapsing on four levels. Edgar Carter is my bodyguard and he's in two of the paintings in this exhibition. This is a portrait of Edgar Carter and, and as um, a weapon he always carries a, a golf club, not a gun. I feel that a golf club is more a symbol of play and there it's just kind of um, less offensive to see somebody with it walking around the golf club. And this is another portrait of Edgar Carter after the economic meltdown when I'm using that Rust-Oleum industrial grade found paint and here he is kind of in a drippy rendition of Edgar Carter with his golf club again. I kind of think of these paintings with the bodyguard as reminiscent of Chinese scholar paintings where you see the Buddha in the landscape. When I paint, I, I'm always describing metaphor to the painting. So for me, on a personal level, they're about my aging process. This is my idea of a serene painting. This is called Capacity Reduction in Gold. I never leave space in a painting because I want to exhaust the viewer and make a parallel between exhausted, depleted industries and an exhausted view. Plain air painting, it always irritated me with, at UCSD, it was a think tank and everyone said art was dead, painting objects was dead. So I, you know, it's my job to, you know, push people's buttons and widen the dialogue. This painting is called My Brothers and Myself 
Um, and, and it depicts three towers. There's one here, which is one brother, another one here, which is the other, and then the third tower is actually metaphorically this little flaming barrel, which is me, because I'm the short, angry one in the family. People think that to be good, art's got to be so intellectual that you can't even be silly or fun, and that's just not true. You can be incredibly conceptual and funny and have fun at the same time.